Hey YouTube, just when I got used to using my bandsaw, it went and broke on me. You'd think getting a new part would be fairly simple, but it wasn't quite that easy. I had to end up importing a part from the US because I couldn't find anything here in Australia that would fit. They're probably around somewhere, but nowhere that I tried. Now I know you can't see the multimeter output, but the method of troubleshooting may help someone. First thing is make dead certain that it's not only turned off, but it's unplugged. And I've got the lead unplugged at the other end, but just so there's no possible doubt among the people on the internet out there, I'm pulling the plug out of this end as well. Absolutely no power on it, and now it is perfectly safe to put a multimeter on. Now not all things are safe this way, just be aware that if there's a capacitor in there that may hold charge for several hours afterwards. But I can see there's no capacitor there, so I think I am pretty safe. Pretty sure that this rather complex switch here is going to be alright because I could start it up by pushing on the solenoid before. And that's the main switch so that was obviously working because I had lights and all. So it looks like we're getting down into here where something is not tripping the solenoid. Nothing at all obvious. So, I'm thinking, sadly, I'm going to have to pull this whole box off so I can get in around the wiring properly to have a really good look at it. More work than I wanted to do. I was hoping to fix it quite easily, but oh well, these things are sent to try us. I've got the box live now. Don't do this at home unless you're comfortable and familiar with working around mains voltages. If I trip the solenoid manually with, with an insulated screwdriver, then it all works. Seems to me that the solenoid's not working. That's the most likely answer to that. As I said, I'll take the outside box off so I can get in and have a really good look at it and I'll have a close look at the solenoid and of course before I start messing around taking the outside box off where I'm likely to inadvertently touch things, I am going to disconnect the power. Okay, again, no power in the system. Have the multimeter switch to ohms. I just wanted to check out some of these switches. I've got a cutoff switch coming in here. This wire goes around to the switch that stops it working. And that should be... Okay, well it's off now. And when the cutoff... Oh no, sorry. That's... Okay, yes. It's on normally. So it's a contact off switch. It's on now, which allows the thing to run. And as soon as it gets down to trigger, it cuts off. And that goes through to these two. Yep, and that just triggered and went off. I'm really thinking that all my issue is going to be in this solenoid switch here. For some reason the solenoid's not pulling that down. Something interesting here. I'll just pick the camera up and bring it around so you can see it. Now that was totally unexpected just there, there's a, a wire just sitting there loose. Now it's been connected, been run around there, it is tinned, so it's like the end's been prepared to go somewhere, but it's not long enough to go anywhere, and it's just sitting there. It's in these clips here, oh, a bit close to see both of those two. So it's obviously sitting where it's supposed to sit, but I just don't see why it wouldn't be in that back clip if it was meant to go up onto that piece there and there's nowhere else it can go really yeah that's a bit of a curiosity that one I don't think it's important other than a curious piece of design or assembly you know, all this was put together in 2007 by looks of it so it's about 11 years old 
got a QC quality control sticker on it from uh, November, October, November 2007. I found out a little bit about this switch now. I've had a play around with it with power to do some testing. I've got the power off again now so I can trace some wires through. But this here on the back and that one diagonally opposite on the other side control the solenoid and I can't find any power going into them. So this is a thermal overload isolated on it so it could well be that something has gone wrong in there and it's not working. On the other hand, so far I can't find any power going into any of these. I'm just going to do a little bit more testing, just probe around and see where these wires come from and work out which ones I should be looking at. Just to confirm that it is in fact this unit that's causing me the problems so that that's the only piece I have to go and buy. I've just got the power back on this, try and figure out where my voltages are. Okay, we've got about 46 there between that and that. 46 there between that and that. 46 there between that and that. That doesn't seem too good. I would have thought that one of these shouldn't have voltage on it. I'm definitely getting the same reading on all of them, which I'm finding a bit odd. Well, the voltages on the thermal overload protection aren't what I expect them to be. So, right at the moment I'm thinking that's going to be the issue. So that's the one I'm going to replace. I don't think it's the solenoid end. Because, if I depress the solenoids, this all runs. So, I think it's the voltage going in to pull the solenoids in, it's not getting through somehow. I'll just move this camera a little bit out of the way. So, let's get in there, whoops. Have another little probe here. I'll take the power off it again now. This is one of the wonderful things about digital cameras. You can take a picture of the exact wiring or anything and how the wires are laid out before you go starting to pull it apart. This is the thing that I'm doing. I am going to take a series of still pictures of it, of just how everything fits together, so I can take it apart and get that replaced. Okay, and that's got the overload relay separated from the solenoid switch. These three wires here are held in by these three screws, which also hold in these three connectors here on the overload relay. So you have to hold those wires into place, push those connectors up into those three 2T1, 4T2 and 6T3 connection slots and then do it all up. That's what I'll be doing once I replace this relay. I'm going to leave it sit there like that so that when I get the new one I can just take it wire for wire and make sure I don't make any mistakes putting it across. Well, I've got a replacement unit for the overload relay. It's not the same brand. It's the same ratings, of course, and hopefully the lineup will be correct. Damn, I don't think it is. Damn, it's not. Damn, damn, damn. This one fits back the front to the other one, which is not very useful to me. All right, well, unfortunately that's not gonna fit. Oh dear, that is unfortunate. Means I've got to go back tomorrow and try and get a different one. All right, pack it in until tomorrow and get back to the shops. I expect this is my replacement relay for the bandsaw. Really good service, out from the States in about a week. Oh yep, yeah, that's exactly what it is. Well packaged in a box about 10 times too big for it, but plenty of padding. Perfect. That's exactly what I need. 
Hopefully my bandsaw will be working again in a few minutes. I'm going to put this replacement relay in now. I've made sure that I'm unplugged at the other end. We've got UVW going from right to left. When I'm messing with stuff that I don't have a circuit diagram for, I always like to do it in order. Just take a few things off, put them straight back into the other unit, and a piece at a time, just to make sure I don't get anything mixed up, because that can be disastrous. And it's very easily done when you don't have a circuit diagram to tell you what you're doing. Watch this top one here because I've got, got a bit hanging in there where they've got to go. I don't want to jostle them out of position. They've been good enough to number all these. We have 8, 95 and 9. So 8, 95, 9 going from right to left again. Start with this double one here. I just got to get him back under here. Oops, that was these. That wasn't too bad. Oops. Perhaps I was optimistic when I said that. Okay, that's all nice and snug. When you're doing things like this, you want to make sure they're all in properly. It wouldn't do to have one of them jump out and start short circuiting. Oops, I need a magnetised screwdriver. I guess the thing to do before I put him back together entirely is to get some power onto him and just very, very carefully give him a test. Right, there's power to him. We have power on the light. Oh crap, we have nothing on here. Well, that's disappointing. Disappointing indeed. That's the drawing board on that one. Fortunately, before I went any further, I ran the multimeter over it again and tested all the lines. Consequently, I noticed that the emergency cutoff had a different value than it did the first time round. Upon checking, I discovered that the emergency cutoff switch had been knocked in while I'd been busy replacing the parts, and that was all that was wrong. The emergency cutoff stays in once it's pushed in until you twist it and it pops back out again. Once I did that, it all worked beautifully. Hey, thanks for taking the time to watch this video. I'd just like to take this opportunity to remind you that unless you're comfortable working around main voltage, don't try to do this at home. If you'd like to see more of my projects and videos, you can go to my YouTube channel or browse to my website. Don't forget to click like, comment and subscribe for more. Until next time.